All right, what's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another Real Talk video, and may the Most High bless you. I pray everybody been having a beautiful, blessed day as we give the Most High all the honor, the glory, and all the praise. My title now says Choir Competitions. Um, got a few emails about what's my take on choir competitions. Hey, everybody is in contests now with these choirs and competing. Um, and uh, I'm going to say this off top because there's a lot of people on here that's musicians, directors, singers that look at me. And I mean this out of the bottom of my heart, out of love. If you in something to perform versus praising and truly worshiping, your heart ain't right. Our father is not in the entertaining business. And I don't care who get mad at what I just said, um, cause I'ma tell you real. You know, this is a real talk video. A few of y'all asked me about this a while back, as a matter of fact. But I know a lot of people ain't gonna like my answer, my respond back. But when you look at the world, everything is already a competition. I mean, you can cut on the television, you can see who's trying to outcook who. Anything you name, it's a competition. It's a contest. You know, all the sports pretty much. You got in basketball, you, you got slam dunk contests. You got who's the greatest musician. You got everything. Racing cars. Um, who's best dressed. Who can act the best. I don't care what you name. It's a competition. In it. Who's Sunday's best. Somebody catch that later on. That's a competition. Somebody got to get sent home. Somebody got to win. Who gonna be the judges of who gonna judge you on what you're doing? So you look at this, boxing, is, is somebody gonna lose. Somebody gotta judge. And I, I'm saying this because with the world, because so much of the church look exactly like the world. That now you got a competition for choirs. You got a competition for preachers now so from a, a biblical standpoint and and as a musician as an MD as a minister of music I'm speaking from that point of view and as a concerned child of the king I see this stuff all the time and get invited to it and you know what I do turn it down I don't get in nobody's competition especially for the most high now when you look at the word competition, think about it. A robbery. Somebody got to go against. There is a prize involved. Robbery between, we could say, two or more people or persons or groups for an object desired in common. That's what the definition will tell you when you look it up in the dictionary of some of the definitions. But it's like I say, somebody going to win and somebody going to lose. So to get in the competition behind who's the best gospel choir is foolish to me now that's just me you don't have to agree with me being in competition I'm going to say it like this with the most high and being in the most high there is no competition when you know when you realize what your purpose is that your purpose is the purpose that the Most High had for you. There is no competing. I see preachers all the time trying to out-preach each other. Fussing about who got the most members. Who got the biggest church. They trying to outdress each other. Trying to out-hoop and holler. I see people having speaking in tongue contests. Praying contests. Running around the church shouting and flipping over pews contests. When you're in the most tired, then you already know that you will always be taken care of. I've never read where the apostles was in competition with each other. I never saw where David was trying to out-sing somebody. And David could sing and play instruments, and he was a great warrior. He could fight, but I never seen David in competition. I never heard of our Savior ever competing. So I'm against, me personally, I'm against choir competitions. 
Now, I know somebody going to say, well, the Bible, the Bible shows you a lot about competing and, and, and so many things. But you know what people are doing? Now you're talking about everybody, but most people are taking those scriptures and flipping them to fit and make what they're doing is right. This is why we have more performing now than true worship. The anointing is gone and being replaced by money and performing and who's best, best dressed. I mean, look at the musicians now. Always in competition. People are showing out to show you who's better. Now, if you're going to have a competition, let's see how many people going to have a getting delivered contest. Because a lot of you folk that's faking and shaking in the church building are full of mess, full of sin. I'm talking about willfully sinning. So you want to throw a contest out there, have a getting delivered contest. See how many homosexuals you can get delivered off the organ. So I'm going to hit home for some people. See how many of those hoish deacons you got in there can get delivered from being hoes and committing adultery while they're still married. If you're going to have a contest... Do something like that. I, I remember P.P. John say, have a living right contest back in the day when he said that. Yeah, have a living right contest. Have a getting delivered contest. Them same ones that's coming in there jacked up year after year that's over everything. Have a contest with them to see how they going to try to straighten up what they doing. Church done became so much of a business. And when you look in the in the world, businesses always compete. That's why Burger King is always trying to outdo McDonald's or Jack in the Box trying to outdo both of them. You got competition in business, politics. Now you got politics all over the church. Politics is a competition, debate going on, arguing going on. See, the reason why I'm saying is because when you look at a choir that competes, they taking their focus off of the true will of the Most High. Because now it's about, we got to win, we got to win, we got to win. But how many of these choir members are going outside of their church building and going into those places where they know the laws are? Instead of singing and shouting and performing every week. How many choir members are going to go hit the streets? Hmm. We so quick to throw on a musical, but we ain't quick to go out here and, and truly minister where we know folks are lost at it. And most of us know in our own neighborhoods alone, there's so many lost people. But we so busy shouting, competing, performing, taking up money, having fish fries and bake sales and, and, and car washes and building fund programs and mission meeting, meeting meeting, meet this, meet that, being in the church building six, seven days out of the week and what are we truly doing? So when I look at this competition, what is it all about? What is it really all about? Once your focus get taken off of the most high, then you are lost. See, in our father's system, we serve each other, not compete against one another. I'm going to say that again because somebody might have missed that. In our father's system, I didn't say this world, in our father's system, we serve each other, not compete against each other. Now you know who loves competition? Satan's kingdom. So you might want to check what you're doing and who you're doing it for. And what you involved in, where you at located. Because if you are in it for competition. And you can't go back and get your own home in order. You doing all this singing and competing. And as soon as you walk out of the church doors that you leaving. And you walk back to a lifestyle of mess. You worshiping. You call yourself worshiping with your lips. But your heart is far from the most high. You in bad shape. See, let me hit you with a, a, a scripture that's oftentimes quoted, but I don't think a lot of people really look into it that compete. Because in Philippians chapter 2, when you get around verse 3 and 4, it teaches you, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than himself. That's powerful. 
Verse 4 will teach you, look not every man to his own things, but every man also to the things of others. That goes to show you how you serve others. How are you going to serve others if you're competing against them? How many of these choirs that's competing will take a choir rehearsal night off and go feed the homeless? Hmm. How many of these churches these that do this would, would uh, and I, it might sound like I'm fussing, but I'm not because I am fussing. Somebody catch that later on. But how many churches would do something for people other than Thanksgiving time? Christmas time. When you should be serving every day. When I see these competitions with these choirs, the musicians are battling every chance they get in the room with each other. This is why in Dallas alone, especially, you can't hardly get five musicians in the room together because they too cocky. They too arrogant. They too busy showing out. It's always who the best drummer, who got the best riffs, who the bass player that's the best. Who got the best organ skills? Dude asked me the other day, JT, who the best out of Jason White and Jamal Hartwell? And I just looked, looked at him like he was crazy. Because they giving from their heart, and they both are cold-blooded musicians that's bringing something to the table, giving from the bottom of their heart, and folks still talking about who's the best. I don't think nobody can hold P.J. Morgan on that organ. But then you got to look at this brother, Elder Wendell Lowe. Ain't nobody knocking with him. Competition. That makes musicians go to church and try to outplay other musicians. And that's why the anointing is lost. I'm not talking about everybody. So a competition leads to mess. That's why these choirs are so busy dancing <laughs> and, and performing and then the people in the in the congregation are being entertained and loving it. But when a real pastor steps in, or a real person that's truly anointed to sing, oh, yeah, they did all right. They just didn't move me. They wasn't they wasn't dancing. I need some excitement when I when I go to church. That's what's wrong with folk. These entertaining saints. They got to be entertained or they don't want to go to church. Now, my question to you is, what's godly about any of that? And you know what competitions for these choirs and stuff do? It make people think highly of themselves than they ought to. It make people start getting stuck on themselves. Then they think they, well, we better than we, we won this year. It's supposed to be unity, not vainglory. The Bible, as a matter of fact, the Bible teaches us the exact opposite of everything that competition teaches. I heard it on the radio this morning. The next choir competition. Forgot what station I was listening to. But they was talking about get ready choirs. Put on your best. Because somebody got to take it home. They always announce it. But the Bible teaches once again the exact opposite of everything competition teaches and pretty much stand for. You know what I call this, my brothers and sisters? That competitive spirit. Whatever you do, if it's not coming from your heart, then it ain't coming, it ain't coming right, it ain't coming out right at all. It ain't coming out, it ain't coming out right. It's the Lord that we serve. Now, the Bible does talk about athletes. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, 24. When the Bible talks about competition, it's usually related to athletic competition. Economic competition. That's why Paul was talking about running a race. But Paul was saying, we're not running as in we trying to win no gold medal. See, we run in our race to get the eternal prize, which is heaven, the most high. Being in that spiritual body, glorified body, eternal life, living forever and ever without all this mess that we're living in now. That's what Paul was showing us. 
See, you can look at anybody that train. You can look at bodybuilders. Any sport that you name, you're going to see people that train to get in shape. But they getting in shape for what? They trying to win. They trying to win. They trying to win a gold medal. They running track. They getting in shape for the Olympics. But see, we supposed to be we supposed to be getting in shape and staying in shape for this spirit, the spiritual walk that we in. And the sad thing is, half of us ain't even in shape for it. That's why the Bible teaches you, yes, exercising this. It benefits a little bit. It's good. But if you ain't exercising this, if you got more muscles than brains, then something wrong with you. If you spend more time working out or whatever it is that you do and spend less time studying and learning how to live right, you, you lost. I love to work out. But I don't spend all day in nobody's gym. I'm going to spend more days in the Word and, 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 and just sitting beside my Heavenly Father. We're trying to get that eternal prize. In so many ways, Cain competed against Abel's offering. Old tricks to Jacob. Jacob first tricked his father into giving him a blessing from his deathbed. Going against Esau. See, just because you're competing to outperform somebody, that don't make you no winner. It's a lot of folk that's winning their little race they in, but they flunking in the Holy Spirit. Yahshua prayed that we all might be one as the Father and He. Now, if my Savior wasn't in no competition, if the Most High wasn't in nobody's competition, and He told us not to be of this world, why is there so many choir competitions? And I hope if some of them win, they can get their church built. Because everybody I know got a building for them, trying to get into another building. That's the saddest thing about most of these churches. I didn't say everybody, but the majority been taking enough money for 20, 30 years, and you don't even know where the money is going. Revivals, you don't know where the money is going. Musicals, you don't know where the money is going. But we sure took up a lot of money. Well, why y'all ain't got the parking lot fixed? Well, why the roof still leaking? Hmm. Why the driveway still got all those cracks in it? Why ain't nobody cleaning the building up right? Why this? Why that? If you're going to continue to take up money, at least fix your church building. Why the uh, equipment don't never work in there? Why the piano got an out of order sign on it? Why all the draw boys on the organ ain't working? Why the drum set in the corner regularly? Can't nobody keep no sticks and it's being held up with bricks. Somebody got mad. I done, I done talked about their church, but I love you. So when I think about a competition as I wrap this video up, I'm not for them. And people know not to call me talking about let's go compete. Let's go. Man, I when I was when I was younger growing up, I used to always compete against people on the weight bench to outlift them. And I found that that wasn't about nothing. You know what that do to you? It tear your body down. That's why I stopped doing that heavy bodybuilding and lifting. I got smart. But hey, everybody's looking for something different. When you was younger, you was always in a competition with something. If you got called out on the football field or basketball court, whatever it was, you was going to try to, you was going to pick somebody that you know that was cold and you wouldn't pick the Cyrus person to join up with you. That's the same way I look at with these churches now. They they going out around enough folk that don't even go to the church to be in a competition because they can sing. I'm going to leave that alone. So that's my take on that. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. Real talk with JT. I'll talk to you when I can. Peace out.